This is my 2004 Mercury Grand Marquis. Wait, I've already done that video. That's right, guys. We are back on the Mercury Grand Marquis, the I Dub Grandma. Why do we call it Grandma? Well, it looks like a Grandma mobile. Well, with the exception of the Mustang wheels, the tinted windows, we badged it Grandma and we plated it Grandma. This is another collaborative effort with Panzer Platform, who has reached out to me to give a interior or a detailed interior look at my car. Some of the upgrades that I've done to it and I want to share that with you guys so uh, come along. If you don't know who Panzer Platform is I will put his link right up here as well as down in the description box below as well as some other guys who are working at this collaborative effort as well. So as I mentioned in my Doug DeMiro video I do have tinted windows all around. Now some of you guys have asked in the question what percentage of tint well in the back it's limo tint on the back doors and the back window but up front and I'm not sure if it comes in on camera. You can actually see in a little bit. Here in New Brunswick, uh, there is a certain level you can have, uh, and that's what I've got here. I believe it's 30% up front, and I believe this is like five or something. Anyways, uh, you can see in pretty good from standing out here on a sunny day, uh, but the back is uh, quite a bit darker. But before we go inside the car, I've got to get it cleaned up because in my Doug DeMiro video, which I will link right here, you guys kind of guilted me. Uh, into giving this thing a spring cleaning because some of you commented on just how dirty it was and in the last collaborative effort with the trunk review uh, I got the same thing so um, I'm not going to show you the trunk because nothing's changed back there In the back seat, nothing fancy here, just your standard bench seat uh, with the uh, map pockets or whatever you want to call them in the back of the seat uh, and the fold down armrest with no cup holders. And as we come up front here, we do have the uh, power lumbar support in the seat on this LS, as well as your power seats, which are virtually on all Crown Victorias and Grand Marquis, I believe, uh, located here on the door. Mine has the trunk release down here on the door as well. And I do have the power adjustment on the pedals as well as traction control uh, here. Now, because I am six foot two, I generally will drive this car with the seat in the furthest back position, but I do like to have my backrest upright a little bit. Uh, I don't do the Coolio or Pimp Daddy or whatever those guys' names are, all laid back and arm over the wheel. I can't drive that way. So, um, some of the things that I rely on on this car are cup holders. And in this one, there are only two. I've got no center console. There's no fold out armrests with built in cup holders here. We just have the armrests. So I've got this little tray that dishes out and any of you guys that have Crown Vicks or Grand Marquis will know that uh, these are prone to breaking and popping out. And this one has broken and it has popped out, but I've fixed it. So I've got it so that if I need to get it out, it's pressure fit, I can pull it out. Uh, but as it sits right now, it's kind of uh, in there. And uh, my wife has been daily driving this as of recent, so she's got her little cup here, as well as her mask. She does work in the hospital, guys, so I'm not wearing masks. Uh, this is for her protection, as well as the protection of the uh, patients at the hospital. You'll note that this car does have the automatic climate control, works very well, uh, and that does tie in with the outside temperature, tells you what the temperature is outside as well. I have added a aftermarket uh, full screen stereo into this car and it doesn't do too bad you guys know that in my uh, stereo install videos on this car I've shown you how to install this but let me show you some of the features that this particular one has this is just a cheap Amazon uh, branded stereo I don't even know where uh, what the name brand is but uh, it is a, just a Chinese brand it has a few features but as far as the display goes I cannot get it to sync with my iPhone to tell me what's playing I have to physically look at my phone which is why I have this wireless charger suction cup hooked to my window and uh, this actually holds my phone so that the display can be read as well as it wireless charges uh, right through the unit. So back to the unit, um, I can run my Bluetooth as well. This unit came built in with a GPS. So when I'm using this, 
uh, on a trip like I did to Pennsylvania last summer. I can count on the map, but as you can see, I pressed the button, it turned yellow, and it took that long for it to uh, come up on the screen. And uh, when you're driving along, as if I was going to pass this road, I would have passed it before the GPS actually shows that I've passed it. So it is a little bit slow, but it does show you your mile per hour. It'll tell you if you're speeding or not. And it's fairly up to date. I didn't run into any situations on my trip where it wasn't giving me the uh, proper information. It'll also talk to you and give you commands just like any other GPS. The other neat feature that it has is the backup camera. So if I turn the car on and uh, put it in reverse, it will switch over automatically to the backup camera. And as you can see there, um, you've got the uh, view from behind my car right now. One of the neat features I do like about that particular feature of the backup camera is as soon as it switches the camera on, it shuts all audio off on the car so that you don't have any distractions while you're backing up. But one of the things I don't like about it is it does have a few glitches. One, the GPS is slow. Two, um, I turned the volume completely off just a second ago and when I put it into reverse and then put it back into park, the volume came back up just a little tiny bit. I'm not sure if you can hear it on the camera or not, but it did come back up. So I'm constantly having to turn the volume down if I need to, or if I need it to turn up, sometimes it'll bump itself up five or six notches or drop itself down or mute it. I'm sure there's probably something wrong with the unit itself, but for the price I paid for it, I'm not complaining. It does a trick. Maybe someday I'll upgrade. As you can see, I got the standard dash on the LS uh, Grand Marquis with no tack. It does have the oil, temp, speed, uh, speedometer, fuel, and voltage. And you can see this car has 222,000 kilometers. And if you work that back into miles, I believe it's in the 130 uh, or so thousand miles. Chuck specifically asked to see the glove box. So we do have a endless supply of dashkins in there. I do have the uh, original owner's manual to the car and inside I was surprised to find the original window sticker to this car and I was even equally surprised to see just how much this car sold for brand new. Now keep in mind guys this is Canadian money it sold for $40,145 and if you do the math with today's currency which is crap uh, that works out to about $30,000 US, so a $10,000 difference uh, between what this thing would have sold for in the US and Canada uh, in today's money. But the, I couldn't believe that this thing cost forty grand Canadian in 2004, like 16 years ago. There's a, you can get so much more for forty grand today, I think, in a car. But then again, you were buying a rear-wheel drive, last of the classics. So uh, at the end of the day, maybe $40,000 wasn't so bad after all. Of course, some of the other things that I have in there is I've got some sunscreen, a roll of toilet paper, and my registration and insurance papers are also in there. So other than that, Chuck, I don't know what more you want me to show. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of upgrades inside. I know the lighting on yours, you probably have upgraded to LEDs. I've just left all the incandescent bulbs on the interior. Uh, it's not that big of a deal to me, seeing how I've had some issues with LEDs in the past. I'm just reluctant to go and switch them all over anytime soon. So. so there is a detailed look at the interior of my 2004 Grand Marquis. Chuck, thank you so much for asking me to be a part of this collaboration one more time. And again, don't forget guys to go over to Chuck's channel and check out some of the videos he has. He is an absolute wealth of knowledge when it comes to the Panther Platform cars. Also guys, don't forget the bumper to bumper challenge is on right now to help support my buddy Kip over at America Bumper to Bumper on YouTube. He's trying to get to a thousand subscribers and the challenge is we want to know how many cars you've owned in your lifetime and we want to see pictures and stories of each one. All the rules will be in the comment section down below as well right here. We introduced that challenge in our live stream on the Car Guy and Six Fan Show with myself and Grant Tommy who is straight six fan. His link is in the description box as well. Let's help get Kip to 1,000 subscribers. The challenge is due May the 31st, and we want everyone to upload all at the same time. Like I said, the rules are in the description box below. Having said all that, thanks for tuning in to Old Car Guy. And stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you guys. God bless. We'll see you in the next video.